Homocysteine. I want to talk about this one for one moment. Uh, again, this may get a little complex here. Uh, homocysteine is something I've talked about in the past. I've done entire podcasts on homocysteine and on MTHFR. I am Italian. I am homozygous for the 677C to T polymorphism in the MTHFR gene, which is part of this methionine or folate cycle. You can see here dietary folate not folic acid that is not occurring in nature it is tetrahydrofolate or methylfolate or adenosyl uh, folate come in through the diet. Okay. They end up as tetrahydrofolate. There's a series of enzymatic reactions, which turn them into 510 methylene tetrahydrofolate that is, is acted upon by MTHFR methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, which needs riboflavin that is B2 and B3 and DHA, according to this diagram, docosahexanoic acid, and that makes five methylfolate. Now, in those of us, Italians, Hispanics tend to have this polymorphism, this MTHFR enzyme doesn't work really well, or it works more slowly, which means we either need to get more folate into our bodies, or we need to find some source of L-methylfolate, or we need to get more riboflavin. So this is a really important thing. At the time of this blood work, I was traveling. I wasn't getting as much liver as I usually do. And I wasn't eating as many egg yolks as I usually do. This is probably why my homocysteine bumped. The last few homocysteines I've seen have been seven when I'm eating enough raw liver per day, an ounce, half an ounce a day. That keeps my homocysteine at seven with no supplementation of L-methylfolate in my diet. Now, is homocysteine the end-all and be-all of the cardiovascular risk uh, equation? No, it's not. We don't fully understand it, I don't think. But I think it is an important thing to know about. And if your homocysteine, I believe, is over eight, I would increase the amount of riboflavin in your diet. Where do you get riboflavin? Liver and heart are the best sources of riboflavin. It's a good review paper I found, the current status of homocysteine as a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. A mini review is from 2018. And you can see here in the abstract, they say that treatment of hyperhomocysteinemia with folic acid, that should be folate, folic acid is bullshit, and B vitamins, specifically riboflavin, but also B3, uh, prevents the development, B3 is niacin, prevents the development of atherosclerosis, cardiovascular disease, and strokes. So it is important to treat an elevated homocysteine. And I've seen homocysteines as high as 18 or 20 in people who are very low on folate, or riboflavin because they're not eating enough of these things. Now, there's some controversy about how much cardiovascular effect it has, but I've seen very clear responses in my diet to more organs and a little more egg yolks, my homocysteine. I want to see it below eight. I was talking to a friend this morning. He said his dad's homocysteine is 12 or more. What does his dad do? His dad does basically a carnivore diet of just meat. Of course, your homocysteine is going to be 12 if you have polymorphisms in the MTHFR enzyme. I think that this is an indication that more organs like heart and liver should be added back to the diet, either desiccated or fresh. Fresh is always best. If you don't want to do fresh, you can always check us out at heartandsoilsupplements.co.